Let's imagine we have some phenomenon, call it x. We know that x exists, but we don't know why it exists or why it is the way it is. In discussions about what the explanation could be, an atheist might say, whatever the explanation is, it must be natural, while a theist might say, whatever the explanation is, it must be supernatural. You're just using God of the gaps, the atheist says. Well, you're just using nature of the gaps, the theist replies. So, who's right? Who's using what of the gaps? To answer this question, I think we first need to define the problem in more accurate and useful terms. It's been shown throughout history that any explanation, once discovered and thoroughly evidenced, becomes a part of our understanding of the world around us. That is to say, it gets moved into the category of natural. Even if we one day discovered solid evidence that some people had telekinetic powers or that the mind could survive bodily death as a ghost, well, that would be the nature of the universe as we now understood it. This means that the statement, the explanation must be natural, is tautologically true, and thus not a useful statement at all. Likewise, the statement that the explanation must be supernatural says nothing more than the explanation is beyond our current understanding of nature, which is also inherently true of the situation. Neither of these statements is particularly useful. So, what terms would I suggest to better define this impasse? Well, it seems to me that when the atheist says that the explanation must be natural, what they really mean is that the explanation is probably some kind of undiscovered unconscious force, like gravity or radiation or something. Likewise, when the theist says that the explanation must be supernatural, what they really mean is that the explanation is probably some kind of unseen intelligence, like a god or a ghost or something. If we can accept that this is what each person is ultimately trying to express, then this helps us figure out who's using what of the gaps. Is the atheist using unconscious force of the gaps, or is the theist using unseen intelligence of the gaps? In this particular situation, I would say that both of them are using fallacious reasoning. If we don't know how to explain x, and if x doesn't have any obvious signs of intelligence on it, like a list of prime numbers or a response to language or something, then neither side can say anything beyond, I don't know what the explanation is. There's no particular reason to conclude that the explanation must be an unconscious force or an unseen intelligence. Now, I think an argument could be made that the null hypothesis in this situation would be an unconscious force or process. This is because, presumably, some kind of force caused X, and intelligence would necessarily be an additional feature of whatever that force is. Thus, adding intelligence to the explanation would require specific positive evidence in that direction. However, I don't need this to be the case to make my point, so I'll just leave it at that. As an atheist myself, the answer I usually give in these situations is, I don't know. How did life first arise on Earth? I don't know. Why is there something instead of nothing? I don't know. However, I will add that if I had to guess, and in lieu of some specific feature that betrayed intelligence, I would go with unconscious force. This is because, throughout human history, it's turned out that things we once explained with gods and spirits have actually been caused by unconscious forces that we simply hadn't been aware of. The sun isn't being pulled across the sky by a deity, it's just gravity. Cancer isn't a curse from the gods, it's just mutated cells that can occur in any animal's body. Plants and animals weren't created in their present form by a designer, they evolved through the unconscious process of natural selection. This is certainly not proof that the explanation of X must be an unconscious force, but it does seem like a reasonable inference given our track record. Again, if I had to guess. Now, of course, if there is evidence of intelligence, I'm open to it, and I will go down that route if given a compelling reason. Indeed, if the search for extraterrestrial intelligence starts hearing prime numbers from space, that would be enough to incline me toward intelligence over unconscious force. Or, if we discovered a message in our DNA that told us, in no uncertain terms, that we were designed, that would be compelling evidence in favor of intelligence. So, if an atheist says, I know that the explanation cannot be an unseen intelligence, then I think it's fair to accuse them of using nature of the gaps, 
or more accurately, unconscious force, of the gaps. But if they, like me, say that they don't know what the explanation is, but their money's on an unknown unconscious force rather than an unseen intelligence, that seems like a reasonable position to take. In contrast, theists, in my experience, will assert that the explanation must be an unseen supernatural intelligence, not because there's some specific evidence in that direction, and not because history shows us a clear track record of this being the case, but simply because they can't think of any other explanation that falls within our current understanding of how the universe works. That, ladies and gentlemen, is classic God of the Gaps, or rather, unseen intelligence of the Gaps. Sure, if you already believe in God, then you can also believe that God explains Phenomenon X. But, if you're trying to convince someone else that Phenomenon X is proof of God, all you're doing is arguing from ignorance. <laughs>